Welcome to our video series featuring conversations with musicians, artists, and creative people of all sorts. So I'm here with my wife, Molly. Hello. And we're going to be talking about, obviously, art and music and COVID-related stuff, all sorts of different things. Um, I just wanted to ask, obviously, some of you watching might know that my wife is half of the Wallens and she's a great singer, songwriter, but uh, you're involved in a lot of other areas in the art world. And I just wanted to see if you could tell everybody a little bit about all the different kinds of art you do. Sure. So I do all of the visual art stuff for the Wallens. I do all of our artwork for albums, for merch, for anything that gets really put out except for random posters that Brian makes because <laughs> he has access to Photoshop and I do not. Mm -hmm. um, so I do all of that and I'm not really formally trained in any of it. I just kind of picked it up along the way. I've taken a couple art classes throughout public schooling, stuff like that, but I just, I've always liked to sketch and so it just seemed natural. And I also crochet, so I do a bunch of yarn stuff, and I have my own Etsy at this point. But Oh, nice. Brian thinks it's wizardry, so Definitely. we'll be driving in the car, and I start with like a ball of yarn and a hook, and five hours later I have a shirt or a sweater or some other cozy thing that we can sell. For those that don't know, uh, and why would you, <laughs> um, the first gift that Molly gave me was... I forgot. It was a sketch of us, and it's actually on the wall in our living room. I'll, I'll bring it up here so you can see it. And I was so impressed. Like, it was, it was beautiful. And, um, you know, I didn't really know that you had that talent. Well, to be fair, that was like a month and a half into our relationship. <laughs> so there's fair that. Enough. To be also fair, the second major gift I gave you was a blanket that I knitted. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> so let's actually let's focus on that for a minute. How how did you get into knitting and crocheting? What drew you to to working with yarn? So for Christmas one year, I have two sisters and a brother. Um, and for Christmas, my mom gave all three of us sisters a knitting kit um, and sat us down and taught us how to cast on and do all that fun stuff with knitting needles. Mm. And right after we met, I picked it back up because I kind of picked it up in college a little bit, but. F again fell off from it but then picked it up again when i met him to make him a blanket because i thought that was sweet yeah for sure and then we planned a trip to australia and you can't take knitting needles on planes because they are weapons Ooh, watch <laughs> out watch out <laughs> however in the international guidelines for flying at least to australia it didn't say anything about crochet hooks and i had some already because they were given to me by my mom and I just never learned how to use them. So I looked up YouTube videos and different patterns and stuff and taught myself how to crochet. And it's a lot easier. It's a lot faster. And I like it. So I kept with it. Awesome. <laughs> so just focusing more on kind of the, the visual art and, and the crochet side of things. You don't want to talk about my degree in music? <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. But just focusing on, on this side of things. Mm -hmm. Where do you typically draw inspiration, especially for mm -hmm. some of your visual art, like sketches, sticker designs, stuff like that? Where does that come from for you? So I'll do it, talk a little bit more about it just like in the now, um, because for Patreon, we're doing a sticker a month. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to plan ahead and kind of figure out the next year of stickers so I didn't have to do it all at once. Um, and so I just kind of started thinking about what we do and what we like and so different stickers that i've made up are <laughs> you as a park ranger <laughs> oh i'm looking forward to that one <laughs> it's really funny it's like one of those like brown and white signs that you see at a campground or something um and so a lot of it is around outdoors stuff that we like to do i drew a succulent because i'm obsessed mm -hmm. um and just it's a lot of camping and mountains and it feels very us and i'd really like to draw any inspiration I can from nature because that's how we write songs most of the time is getting out in it. Um, and there's also like something I just drew was myself in a hippies poster from like the seventies. <laughs> so it always, it comes randomly. I can't fully explain it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, for, for those who are just getting introduced to Molly's visual artwork, I would say from, from my perspective, you definitely have kind of a, a very identifiable style. Well, thank you. I mean, 
Um, Molly did the artwork for our last album, mm-hmm. A Song to Give. <laughs> In and also, one night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also for our new record coming out, um, Our Neck of the Woods. Mm-hmm. And you can see if you look at the covers that there's, you know, even obviously though she's progressed as an artist, that there's kind of a, a connection in the style of the two, at least to me. Thank you. I've also used better equipment Mm -hmm. (laughs) since the last one um i think the last album i was using my kindle yeah instead of my ipad and just like a stylus i'd bought off amazon for like ten dollars and i'd crocheted myself this sleeve for my pinky and my hand (laughs) so that i could put my hand on the screen and not interact (laughs) with like interfere with what i was drawing and so for christmas this year his parents got me an apple pencil so i don't longer have to wear that thing (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's really cool for me. I'm I'm a very creative person when it comes to music. Mm-hmm. And then I I know a lot on the technical side. Like I do a lot of obviously engineering and producing and you know the the part of graphic design which as Molly mentioned is working with stuff in Photoshop and things like that. But you know, when it comes to actually creating <laughs> visual art out of nothing, I I can't do that. I I really do look at it as wizardry. So and to be fair to you, I do a lot of tracing <laughs> for like portraits of us stuff that I've used for merch, like the T-shirts we did with our the outlines of our faces and Charlie. Um, those I took photos first and then traced around, uh, but it still counts. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about music. Okay. Um. When we first met, I obviously knew that you were a singer. I mm-hmm. knew you went to college. For it was voice. in my Tinder bio. It was. It was a big selling <laughs> point. How have you sort of made the transition from someone who grew up singing in choirs in church and studied voice in college to now being an artist and a songwriter? It took a lot of confidence boosting and just time on stage and being around it for me to really feel comfortable. And I'm kind of just now getting into the swing of being able to really talk on stage in a way that makes sense and shows myself without being too awkward. (laughs) I'm still awkward, but it could be worse. Um, And I don't know, like we talk often about how the first song that I really wrote was constellations. And it's one that I'm very proud of. And it's one that a lot of people seem to like, which I'm, baffled by still um and that just kind of happened like we were driving i think it was the first trip we took to colorado then being able to collaborate on what the rest of it sounded like around my melody and words with you was just interesting because i got to see it come to life and i saw that a lot with this actually second album we've done i sat in the chair you're sitting in while brian was recording in the corner back here and at one point, I just started crying when he was recording mandolin because I was like, oh, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> and it's not something that I could have described to him and he just did it. And so it's been way easier to get into this form of life because I have a great partner to do it with. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I do want to give you credit because none of my life right now would be possible without, without you. And I'm crying now because this is how emotional I get all the time. But... Um, when we met, I was in a state of in-betweenness. <laughs> I had two jobs. I was working part-time at um, a Joe's Crab Shack as a bartender. I was working part-time at a PNC bank as a bank teller. And I think like two months into our relationship, I went full-time at PNC and got rid of Joe's. But I was in this area where I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I have a degree in music education. I don't want to teach music, but I should be using music at some point in my life and at that point I was just singing in the church choir doing that kind of stuff and then he came in and swept me off my feet and it's been incredible ever since really and I'm just continually amazed that this is my life. Well I don't want to (laughs) take all that much credit because all I really did was sort of give Molly the space to to be who she is and um, you know I I never expected like anything specifically. I just knew that she had a great deal of talent and I figured she could do whatever she wanted to do. The fact that 
what she wants to do is create all of this visual art and fiber art um, <laughs> with with yarn, and 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 then also be a a singer and songwriter is is really awesome and inspiring to me. And um, I'm just curious, you know, for for me as a songwriter, I get inspired by nature um, a lot, and I I really write a lot of hippie songs. Um, <laughs> we both do. So what inspires you to write? What what will make you just reach for a guitar and, and want to write something? Well, usually it's not a guitar. It's a ukulele because I can play that better. Um, <laughs> but it's usually nature for me as well, as well as just solitude. Like we get so, and we've talked about this just between us with all of this forced solitude with quarantine is been good for us because we've been writing more and being creative more because we have time and so often everybody gets caught up in the rat race that is american society and we don't take the time to actually sit down and act and just write and i think that's something that i need to work more on but a lot of that inspiration just comes from being alone and mm. being in my own head in a good way <laughs> um like the song that I wrote about my mom, um, Singing in Heaven, was kind of one like that where we were at an open mic night and somebody, our friend Nate, was on stage and he was singing and I just kind of, it just kind of hit me that I should write a song about my mom. And she passed away in 2009 and she's a big influence on who I am as a person all around. And so I wanted to make it sound like her and I think it kind of gives you enough imagery to really be in those moments. And so I really just pull a lot of inspiration from people who inspire me, um, nature being alone and kind of what's just going on in the world. Yeah. And what I think needs to change. <laughs> I, I think we either wrote or, or maybe finished writing what three songs for, uh, for this mm -hmm. new album during this whole COVID situation. Oh, yeah. Um, I distinctly remember we've got a ways to go. I started on the road a while ago. Yeah. Like but you didn't finish it until recently. No, right? I started it over a year ago and um, had kind of figured out the chords for it. And I didn't really have a strong direction of where it was going to go. And then you were gone for something. And this is when I work on stuff. It's when he's not around. So he can't judge me. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, I get in my own head about my own songwriting and I want to present a more polished product when I bring it to somebody. Eh, you don't have to worry about I that. I know, but I do. Um, but I worked on it while you were gone at some meeting or something. And then I played it for him when he got back. And so I figured out how to make it all work in a way that made sense by being here. Yeah, so uh, along those lines, um, we're both introverts. Yes, <laughs> quarantine um, has been great, honestly, because I've just sat and drawn and written and worked with crochet hooks. <laughs> I yeah. love people, but I need time to recharge. I actually thought I was an extrovert until I met him, and then I started critically analyzing myself and realizing I'd had a lot of alone time throughout my year or throughout my life in order to recharge yeah, makes sense. So, um, you know, you mentioned that, you know, sort of the, the COVID situation being stuck at home has has sort of helped you find more time to be creative mm -hmm. and um, and recharge more. Um, now that we're sort of getting back to normal, whatever that is, or, or things the are... The new normal, things, is the car yeah. commercial say. Right. Things are <laughs> opening back up. Um, where do you feel like it's going to go from here just in terms Oof. of uh, creatively, whether it's for you personally or just as a whole, what do you see kind of happening? Well, we've talked a couple of times about how we're going to cut back um, some and not try to overwork ourselves um, with being on stage and things like that because driving a lot does take it out of us mm -hmm. um, and that's not healthy. But I think just creatively, I want to make sure I have time every day to either create something well to create something it just doesn't matter how you know I don't necessarily want to sit down every day and be like I have to write a song today sure I don't think that's good for my creativity level um but I do think that just creating space for me to be alone in my mind to just see what happens is important 
this is a question that that you pose that I've been mm -hmm. trying to ask people. Mm -hmm. So if you could name a dream instrument, like if you could have anything, what would it be? It would be a five and a half octave rosewood marimba. Okay, <laughs> and and could you explain for those that might not know what a marimba is? So I was in marching band and like starting in eighth grade all the way through high school. And I was in the pit, which is that front ensemble full of percussion instruments, like xylophones and things that can't be marched <laughs> because they're heavy and it would look really funny. Um, a marimba is basically a bigger xylophone and it's made of wood. So it has a very warm sound and rosewood itself is beautiful mm. looking and sounding. And I always wanted a five and a half octave one because it's bigger than the standard one that I had to play. And I don't know where we would put it, but I just want to be able to play with four mallets again and make it sound pretty. Very cool. And <laughs> how much does one of these cost? Um, about the price of a small car. So 15000 plus. What? <laughs> yeah. I've never owned a car that cost $15,000. I haven't either. <laughs> Okay, so... New small car. <laughs> one of the other things I like to ask other uh, guests on this show mm -hmm. is, what's the best post-gig meal? Ooh. See, you're the one that eats stuff after gigs. I usually don't because he's Pre -gig a man. Pre-gig meal? Pre-gig Pre -gig meal is something light because I don't want to like hurt myself i feel like i'm talking to ricky nye again I know. he's just like yeah i just try to be super healthy you know, eat something light here's the real answer if i could have anything after a gig i want cheesecake or skyline chili okay <laughs> well ricky said gold star chili so <laughs> he's you guys wrong. it's skyline at least you're you're thinking along the same lines of of food groups uh all right so that's cool i was having a conversation with with a mutual friend of ours the other day and he said man your wife is just like on fire like she is just out there telling people the way it is and I'm curious um, how did you sort of get so passionate about activism and how do you see that fitting into your art so it happened because I care about people um, that's the fundamental part of it um, I was raised a Methodist and one of the like key points that I remember from that entire experience was hey you should love everybody and you should love God and then we moved here or I at least moved up to this area and we started attending a Disciples of Christ Church in Richmond and our pastor is one who is blunt <laughs> and sticks straight to the point and she backed me up and said basically that we are supposed to be anti-racist and I took that and ran <laughs> and it's really just because I love people and I know that there are flawed people out there but there is an entire group of our people right now who is suffering and who has been suffering for 400 years and I think it's kind of time for that to end yeah that's well stated um and and I'm actually thinking too like that's that's a great topical mm -hmm. answer for sort of Right now. What's what's been in the news right now? Um, obviously, it's been an issue, as you said, for mm -hmm. for many many years. But um, this has always kind of been a part of of your art. Who are your major influences <laughs> as hmm. you know, <laughs> as a songwriter or as a visual artist? Who are the people that really in inspire you? Let's start with visual artists because that one is a smaller <laughs> um, amount of people. Um, the first one I've always been obsessed with Monet he has wonderful just like my style is nothing like his hmm. but the colors he uses and the way he uses light kind of make me think a little bit differently about how stuff works um but really a big influence on my own style is my friend DePaul he's hmm. an artist out of Miami and um we met in college his name is DePaul Vera that's DePaulVera.com if you want to check him out be aware his artwork is not safe for work or really <laughs> children. Um, <laughs> but it's great stuff because he is a proud black gay man. And um, he's just a wonderful light in this world. And finally is in a space where he feels comfortable sharing his artwork with people that actually love it. And he has kind of that pop kind of like comic book almost style um, with his drawings. And so his bold outlines I really, really like. And so that's kind of where I figured out that part. Cool. 
along with music. Let's see. There's Amanda Shires, Brandi Carlisle, Sarah DeRose, I'm With Her, Nickel Creek, <laughs> um, everything that I've ever loved um, pretty much comes from that. And there's a lot of people that go along with that kind of group of people as well. Um, Rhiannon Giddens is wonderful and had a lot of influence on We've Got a Ways to Go along with Mavis Staples. Um, even though I need to listen to more Mavis stuff in general. Um, Childish Gambino, hmm. actually. <laughs> um, he's one that is not scared to speak his mind. So I kind of picked up a little bit of his voice, but not <laughs> nearly as much because I don't have that much spunk. Hmm. Um, but I think mostly in the songwriting realm and my sound... Um, we were trying to figure that out on one of our walks recently. I think it's more of the Sarah DeRose, I'm with her lean. Yeah. With Evo Donovan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it works really well because, you know, my biggest influences, at least in the last several years here, have been Jason Isbell and, and John Prine. and so <laughs> It's all in the same realm. <laughs> yeah, so when you put that together with her influences, mm -hmm. you get a bluegrass record. <laughs> so It is kind of funny to me, though, that, like, We've talked about this often where in, it makes sense. Like his biggest influences are men, minor women. And yeah. um, I remember asking you like who your top five songwriters were and all of them were men. <laughs> and I just started busting and out laughing because I was like, that is so typical. <laughs> Last question that I, that I have uh, for you. What advice would you have for other creative people who are maybe just starting out or trying to find their way? Is there something Ooh. you could offer as encouragement or advice? That's a really good question. Um, the first thing that pops into mind is don't be afraid to mess up because I am almost continually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I have anxiety. It's one of the things that I work on constantly. And I remember the first time we sang on stage together, I immediately felt at ease because Brian forgot to turn my mic on. And so I thought that's the worst thing that could happen right now. <laughs> and so <laughs> that way I was able to kind of put that aside and then move on with what we were doing. But I think that's the thing that I struggle with the most is letting myself mess up constantly. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's really what, that's where I would go. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cause it's something I'm still working on today. All right. Well, that's Molly. Uh, you can follow her a bunch of different places. Yes. Um, she has an Etsy shop for her crochet work. Hook yarn and singer. Uh, she's got a blog. She's got, you know, Instagram, all sorts of stuff. All the links are in the description. Thanks for taking the time to, to talk about your art. To sit in our own house and talk to you about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's all for this week. Thanks for tuning in. We're supported by our patrons on Patreon. We'll see you next time. Be well.